Day nine. Uh, I didn't really do a video yesterday because uh, for two reasons. Partly my battery was really low and I was trying to save it in case I needed it for maps and things like that. Um, and secondly because I was totally exhausted for reasons that I'll soon come to. And um, there was a bit basically where people were saying it's uh, it's difficult without a guide. You won't, you, you might get lost, that kind of thing. Uh, and there were some people in the morning that happened to be heading in the direction that I needed to go. So rather than kind of waste any time, um, I just went with them. They were going pretty quickly. Uh, I didn't have much food either, uh, but I just thought if I don't go with them, you know, it could be, it could be another day, it could be another two days um, to get through that section. So, so I just went with them and I really need to get out of this, um, this kind of quite wild bit uh, because it's completely uncharted. It's not on any map or all, there are paths around here. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but this, this, is, this is quite a big path for around here. Um, it's kind of like the main path that joins two regions. Um, so at the moment, so far it's been okay along here. But, um, but yeah, it, it could have been, it, like if it, if it was like the same as the last couple of days, then if I wasn't following anyone, I would have got really stuck. So, so I just uh, pressed on. But anyway, uh, the reason why I was so tired is basically because I think I was almost mugged to run through the whole story uh, as quick as I can. So not yesterday, day before that, I was, it was a long day, lots of jungle. I came down from the mountains, down to the river. I was looking for somewhere to stay and I was heading into the next town. It's starting to get dark. I think it was about two hours, an hour and a half before it got completely dark. Um, and I bumped into this bug here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, walking past one of these little shops that you have here and there, people selling just like little sweets and super noodles and, uh, and drinks. Um, kind of for the locals, it's not like a touristy thing or anything, but uh, there were two guys there uh, who straight away said that they were Nepali police. Uh, it, didn't, it took me quite a while to realise that they were pretty drunk. Uh, I'm not good at noticing that kind of stuff. Um, they did have, they had identical trousers on, blue, kind of tatty, but they just kept saying that they're police. Um, and then when I realised it was, it was really obvious that they were completely drunk or on drugs. Um, it was a bar, there was lots of empty um, kind of spirits, 40% stuff, bottles lying around the bar for that. Probably not all theirs, but it's obviously an alcohol type place. Uh, anyway, they said that they will show me how to get to the next place. Uh, they were pretty insistent. I didn't really like the situation, but again, any if I bump into someone that's going in the direction that I'm going, then that's a real plus because there's so many of these paths. You know, someone can just say, oh yeah, that the place you're going to is along that path. And then at some point, you know, you don't, you don't see anyone along the path. And then at some point the path just splits in two and, and that's it. You've got to just, you've got to just pick one. Um, sometimes obviously you take a compass bearing roughly in the direction you're going to, but because they zigzag so much, um, and switch back along mountains that it's very, very difficult to, to know. Uh, so you have to kind of just try it and then an hour or two down the line, no, okay, turn around. Uh, anyway, so, so I decided to go with it. Uh, it, it wasn't that bad at the time. I just thought, well, they're police that have finished their shift and they've had a few drinks. That's not the worst thing in the world. But, uh, so we carried on. Uh, as soon as we started, I, I just, my level of uncomfortableness grew. Um, and then pretty early on, there was two of them. So one guy would be ahead and the other guy would really encourage me to go in front of him so that I'd effectively be between the two of them. And I just thought that was a really odd thing to do. No, no one does that around here. You know, obviously you sometimes walk in front of someone, behind them, next to them, whatever. But he was trying to be kind of polite, like saying, after you. And I just, I just didn't like that. I just, I wanted to be at the back. I wasn't that comfortable. I wanted to be um, at the back. So I just said, no, no, after you. And then he was really insistent. 
And that kind of back and forth of like, you go in the middle, uh, basically lasted for the whole two hour walk uh, that, I, that I walked with them. And later on, it got a little bit aggressive. Like he's saying, no, you walk in the middle, you walk in the middle. Um, he, obviously, well, he figured that I wasn't sure that they were police. So one of the guys got a top jacket and it had a name and it said Bat, B-H-A-T, which is Rice, I think, but it looked like his surname was Bat. Um, then he showed me some kind of ID, which didn't have his photo on it. It wasn't a great ID, but that could just be the way it is. Um, it didn't really, I don't think it mentioned anything about police. Um, it was like a tax reference type card. Um, it did look like an official document, but just not a great one. Um, I don't know. I still don't know if they were police or not. Um, I mean, but at the time it didn't really matter because even if they were police, uh, it doesn't mean that they weren't trying to mug me. You know, they could have been crooked police. Um, one of the guys kept snorting something out of a packet as well along the way. Um, then there was an instance where the guy that was normally really slow, uh, he, he went ahead, he pressed ahead kind of quite fast. Uh, and then it was just me and the younger guy. Uh, and then I, I, we'd be walking and I noticed that the older guy, the one that's normally really slow, the one that went ahead, is just lying like as if he's having a rest in the bush, but like quite hidden in the bush, if you know what I mean. Uh, and it just felt like the, the plan was to, you know, I, I walk past them and then, hey presto, he's behind me, I'm in the middle of two of them. Um, I've, I had my running poles with me, so that kind of gave, gave me some kind of air of protection. I don't know whether rightly or wrongly. Um, and yeah, the younger guy kept asking to try the poles out. Um, I didn't really want to give him up. Uh, he was asking if he could borrow my hat. I don't know whether that was just like, well, I don't know. I mean, at the time I just thought if he borrows my hat and then kind of jokingly doesn't give it back, then maybe I'll feel a bit more obliged to stick with them. Maybe they thought I was just going to bail and run. Um, what else? Yeah, it was getting darker. They were just taking a long time. I knew how far it was to the next place and it just became more and more evident that we weren't going to make it there uh, before the sun was going to set. So I don't know what the plan was, whether I was just thinking maybe they're waiting for it to get dark and then I'm a bit more vulnerable because I don't know where I'm going or anything like that. Um, they were just, every now and again, they were getting a bit aggressive. Um, I still don't know, you know, maybe they just didn't like the situation, like they thought that the situation went a bit horrible and it was genuine. Um, like at one point he was saying, you're welcome, 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 like aggressively, you are welcome. I don't know, no, no one he, that I've met in Nepal so far, Nepal, like you said, they, they say Nepal here, obviously, um, and I'm just used to pronouncing it Nepal. Um, no one I've met here has acted like they did. Um, apart from like on the first day, there was this one guy again, like he was drunk and he was asking for money in kind of like an aggressive way. Um, but I just brushed that off. Uh, but this, this was different. This was two guys about my age, maybe a little bit older. Um, and yeah, they had a backpack, who knows was, what was in the backpack. Um, anyway, so when we were coming into the place, the next village, um, I was just basically, I, when I was walking, I was constantly looking for places like, if it turns nasty at any given moment, what is my exit route? Um, and then we were starting to get to what looked like a, well, basically they said, here we are, we're at the village. Uh, it really didn't look like a village at all from the outside. There was someone there with like a torch shining at us. Um, they kept, oh, sorry, the, the other thing is they kept asking me to see how, they're asking me, how much money I've got on me. Um, at one point they asked me if my passport is in my pack. Um, lots, I mean, I may be forgetting a few things, but there was just lots of questions that just didn't seem to, the, the questions that someone that was genuine would not ask. Um, and it was just more than anything else, it was the feel of it. Um, it was the way that they were being aggressive. Um, why would police, do that you know everyone else here has been really really friendly um, so who knows who knows um, 
so when we got to, to what was supposed to be the village, I had a look at my map and I, the village isn't on a map, but I, I placed a marker where I thought the village was going to be according to what advice I was given by a local. Now it turned out to be that the place we arrived to was the village and the marker was wrong. But anyway, at the time, I thought that we're not the village. They're saying it's the village and they, and they were saying, follow us here. So I just thought, right, this is it. It's coming to a head. I need to decide. Um, at least they got me <laughs> this far along the way. And to be fair, if I wasn't going with them, the route was really um, straight. It wasn't just a single path. It was kind of like a path and then it splits. You have to know which way to go. Then you go along the river uh, for a while. Then you have to climb a bit of rock and uh, yeah, for, for better, for worse, um, at least I made it past that section. Um, so when we arrived at the village, I didn't know it was the village. Um, they were kind of a little bit ahead of me because they were, they were getting to the entrance of the village or whatever along that path. Um, I just, I just left. <laughs> uh, at, th at this point it, was, it got dark. They didn't have lights with them and I did. I kept it on, there's a little bug there. Uh, I kept mine on a dim setting so that if I had to just run away, I could turn it off and my eyes would still be uh, fairly well adjusted to the dark because the, it was a clear night and the moon was about half full. Um, so it was tricky to see. Um, uh, and the terrain is tricky. So you, you need to know, you need to see where you're going because there are lots of big rocks everywhere. You can't just run in a random direction. Um, you'll just fall over instantly. Um, so, so I just left. I picked um, that moment when they were quite far ahead. I kept going further to them and further back to kind of like keep stretching that distance so that they kind of um, trusted that I would still stay with them. So it wasn't like I was close to them and then suddenly I was miles away because they would know that I, want, I was getting ready to, to get away from the situation. Uh, so anyway, I kept stretching that distance. Um, and then when we came to that village, I was at the furthest point I'd been so I just thought, perfect opportunity. So I left um, uh, and I went along the river front, along the rocks, because uh, I thought that they don't have a light with them. Uh, I can turn mine on to a bright setting so that I can cross like a, a, a fair distance, then turn mine either off or to a red setting or to really low and then carry on going away. If they chased me um, without lights, they definitely wouldn't be able to go as fast as I could. The only thing is obviously they really know the area and I have no idea where I'm going and it might be a dead end along the river. So I went along the river um, then when I was a certain distance away, maybe 50 meters or so, I don't know, maybe more, uh, I turned mine to a red light, took it off my head, held it kind of near the ground so that they couldn't see that red dot even um, because of the the bushes that were kind of like um, thigh height um, and then I kind of wanted to get off the beach because very exposed there but I found a little path that went up onto some farmland I went into the farmland um, if, if, if there was a section if there was a section that was fairly flat and uh, and wasn't rocky so that you, you can walk um, kind of without seeing where you're going I would just turn the light off completely or put my hand over it anyway um, and I kept going and I just went through fields and then farmland basically I bumped into I literally bumped into a cow at one point that, that scared the cow probably just as much as me um, who was lying down um, and yeah so I kept going not for that long um, because it was obviously kind of like there's a tiny little village maybe 10 15 houses and then around it was a little bit of farm buildings that were empty um, and I just, I, I just, I didn't know what to do really. I didn't know where to hide in farm building. That's a pretty obvious place to hide. So I decided just to, to hide in some undergrowth, um, in, in a bush basically, um, just found a nice secluded spot and just stayed pretty low, hid in there, um, turned all my lights off. As soon as I had that moment where I was just sat there, I got my satcom out. Um, notified um, basically some of my emergency contacts just just to explain the situation 
just in case they did come looking for me. You know, maybe they wanted all of my equipment. And, you know, the worst thing that, that could have happened is I lost all my equipment. I don't think they would have hurt me, really. Um, but I really don't want to lose all my equipment. Uh, that would have meant maybe having to cancel the entire, um, the, the entire adventure. Um, maybe I could have replaced some kit, um, but it would, it would have just, I don't know, it would have been completely different. I, di I didn't want that to happen. Um, and I just thought if I was placed in a position where, um, where I had to, obviously I would have, obviously I would have given them everything. Um, but, but I just decided to see how it goes <laughs> and just to get away and maybe, um, just be super cautious about it. So anyway, I stayed in the bush. Um, I, I messaged some of my emergency contacts just to let them know, kept them aware of what was happening. And then I didn't really want to move from that spot. Again, who knows? Maybe they're actually actively looking for me. Maybe they just stood somewhere waiting to see if there was a bit of movement in those fields. The fields are pretty much empty. And there was quite a lot of light coming off the moon. So I just, I just thought I may as well sleep here. If I leave there, where am I going to go anyway? I can't, you know, completely dark. I can't, I can't find a good camping spot. So I just stayed there. Um, I didn't really want to set my tent out completely. It's got luminous um, guy lines. Um, and it would have been just an object that's obviously um, not normally there. So I unpacked my tent and kind of just used it as a bivy bag. So I just went inside, um, zipped it up. So mosquitoes, bugs, are all of that are on the outside. Uh, and just try to get a bit of rest. Probably got maybe two hours sleep during the whole night. Obviously, adrenaline's pumping, you know, the last two hours. Um, and on top of all of that, that was actually my, even before all this happened, it was my longest day. Um, so it was 12 hours in the end on my feet, plus all the adrenaline. Um, I really needed rest, and I just had two hours sleeping on the ground, no mattress. Um, in the early hours, getting a little bit cold, but not too cold, because obviously it's so hot here, even in the night just on the ground without any thermal protection, it's still uh, pretty, well, okay. It's uh, not too bad. So uh, so that was that. And then in the morning I left and, I, and when I woke up, the, the farmer of the field that I was staying at was actually around and he was the one that um, kind of pointed me in the right direction for the place where I need to go. Uh, and that was it. So yesterday was just, I was just really, really tired because of all of that. And I had to basically just go up, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 meters. Um, hence no videos yesterday. And last night I had, a, I had a good rest. I found a really secluded spot where I just felt completely safe, uh, away from anyone, just to reset. I had an early night, probably fell asleep about eight and woke up about half five um, and just had a lazy morning and um, and I feel much better today. Spirits are high again. Um, I'm ready to press on. Uh, the only thing is I've just realized uh, because, because my, my, um, my phone battery where my map is ran out and I didn't want to stop yesterday to, to charge it up on the solar. So I charged it up today. I've had a look at the map and it looks like everyone's point. Basically I'm asking for the next big city that I, I know I need to go through and everyone's pointing in this direction but it seems to be that this direction is going to a main road rather than being the quickest um, kind of small footpath track type way to get to the next city. So it may be a bit of a detour. Uh, it may be the only way anyway, because it's very mountainous around here. So, um, but it doesn't really matter. Even if it's a bit of a detour, even if I have to run along the highway, if I do, that will probably be Maybe if I had one long day or one and a half days, it's something like, what, 50, 40, 50 kilometers along the highway. Uh, but the highways here, uh, I mean, it depends, but they're, they're not that busy. They're still, they're still nice. Um, it, might, it just might be a little bit longer than planned, but this whole section has been way longer than planned. So at least on a highway, uh, I know where I am. It's on the map and everything's good to the top of a peak and I just wanted to show you the view so it's not always my face. It's on one side and then there's this little temple at the top.
and on the other side it's like a different climate it's all misty you can't really see but uh, you can see the mist this is the kind of path i've got just a cow on the same trail as i am heading in the opposite direction who knows why 